Welcome back to another video on the channel and in today's video I've identified one transfer each League 2 side should make going into the 2024-25 season. It's going to be a big summer I believe this um, transfer window. Uh, I think it's going to be a tight league next season so each club needs to find the quality for themselves really to really push for promotion which is you know, every um, team's aim really to get out of this league and get that promotion. Um, so yeah. Let's get into the video. Starting off with recently promoted Bromley, also got promoted for the playoffs in the National League. And the player I've identified is Richard Brindley. Recently at the club for a season, he obviously knows the environment and a move back down to London could suit both parties in this one. I think they need that right centre back in the back three. They've got Webster as the centre, central centre back and then Reynolds as the left centre back. So it's, I think he's suiting really well as that right centre back. Probably not as strong area really that they'd want, but he brings that calmness and he can make um, a load of good passes and build up play really well. Newport County, and I think the main priority they've got to go out and sign is a permanent left back. Um, you know, Towards the end of last season, there was having Will Evans slotting in at left wing back at times. So it's a priority to go and sign a left back. And the player I've identified is Anthony Glennon on a free transfer from Grimsby. I was really impressed what I saw from Glennon at his time at Grimsby. His numbers were pretty good. Four assists in eight in 15 appearances last season. And he managed to rack up um, nine assists a season before. So his output going forward is really good. And yeah, I think it's a sign in Newport should go and sign, you know, be a guaranteed starter in the Exiles um, starting 11. Accurton Stanley, obviously they'll need to replace Loney Brad Hills, who has returned to his parents' side, Norwich. Can't see him coming back to Accrington next season, so they've got to look elsewhere. And I think the player they should go and get is Ben Goodliff from Sutton United. Obviously, they've been recently relegated, so Accrington should be taking full advantage of this. I think he's a really good centre-back. Um, he hasn't played as many games as he'd want to this season, picked up a few injuries, but overall, in his couple seasons in the league too, I thought he looked a really good centre-back all round. You know, he's got, he's got that physical presence and he can play the ball as well, so... Yeah, I think they should go out and get Ben Goodliffe. Morecambe, and it's a really tricky one to pick for Morecambe. Obviously, it's very unknown at the moment who the manager is going to be. And obviously, with the off-the-field issues at the club, it's hard to identify one nail-on player. You know, they've only got three players contract to the club as well. So, they need signings all over. But I think the player they should go out and sign is Russian Hepburn Murphy. Recently released from Swindon. I think there's a really good player in there. And I think under the right management, if they can get it in, they can get the best out of him. I think he's got some good attributes. He's very pacey. He's very hard to come up against from the opposition defenders. Really tricky player to come up against. And I think if you can work on his final output, there's definitely a player and it could really work out for both parties in this one. Barrow, obviously the time recording this video, they are without a manager at the moment with Pete Wilde leaving the club. But I can still suggest the signing. They, they kind of work around the same model of signings. Looking... Um, to recruit from the lower league so one I've identified is Kented Richardson from Gateshead I think he had a solid campaign um, in the National League last season and I think his versatility could be really key if Barrow, were, Barrow or a League 2 side were looking to bring him in he can play right back um, in a centre back partnership in a back three or left back so really handy for any club and I think his passing is really good and if it's a team looking to progressively build up um, possession for the pitch I think this one would require a fee but would be a smart signing recently relegated Fleetwood now obviously they, they've kept the majority of their squad um, permanently I think they only released two players with a few low knees going back so I don't think there's going to be a massive overhaul but I think they need to bolster in the centre midfield department so the player I've identified is Daniel Adshead Recently released from fellow League 2 side and fellow team that got relegated, Cheltenham Town. I thought he had a really um, impressive loan spell at AFC Foyle, obviously a team local to Fleetwood in the second half of last season. I think his passing ability is a joy to watch. I think he's very good technically on the ball and I think this is a signing Charlie Adam could get the best out of. So wouldn't be a bad, op bad option and I think it's a player Fleetwood should go out and sign. Salford City, obviously the big loss of Matt Smith will have to be replaced going into next season. Obviously they'll have to try and look at different um, profile of signings in that department but I think the players should go out for 
and sign is Charlie McNeil. He announced he's leaving Manchester United in the summer and obviously with the links with Salford and Man United, I think this one could be a possibility. I think the potential's there. 20 years old, he's highly spoke about with his time at Man United. I just think he needs to find regular football. Obviously, he was out on loan at Steve in his last season. Obviously, didn't have the impact he'd have wanted, so maybe a drop down to League 2 to rebuild and get experience of adult football, men's football, could be a priority for Charlie. And I think it would be a good signing for Salford, one they could, you know, develop and sell on at a profit later in Danny's career. Cheltenham Town, obviously, it's a hard one to do as well. Also, without a manager and their club at the moment, it looks a little bit of a mess. So I'll stick with a loan signing for this one and one that should go out and sign. I think Archie Mayer would be a really good signing to replace Luke Southwood in between the sticks. Obviously, like I said, priority will be need to go and sign two goalkeepers. And I think a young keeper in Archie Mayer would be a really good one. He's got plenty of experience in his career so far. You know, at Notts County, Morecambe last season on loan. I think he'd do a good job in between the sticks. He's everything you want in a modern day goalkeeper. Comfortable with, with the ball at his feet. And he makes some really good saves in between the sticks. Harrogate Town, I think this one is a no-brainer. With Abraham Odo leaving to Peterborough, I think this one would be the perfect fitting signing to replace him. I think they have to go out and sign Jack Diamond, Harrogate. Obviously, Jack Diamond, you know, he needs that platform again to rebuild his career and, you know, move himself up the leagues. And I think there's no better place for him to sign in Harrogate. Everyone knows his capabilities at the club. You know, Simon Weaver knows how to get the best out of him. And I think with his loans, a couple of loan spells at, at Harrogate, I think he was one of the better players in League Two in that season he had with Harrogate in League Two on loan. Really good player, really, really good, lots of potential there as well. And one Harrogate, you know, it's a no brainer, really. Wimbledon, and I think a must they have to recruit in is the goalkeeping department. Obviously, Alex Bass has gone back on loan. I think a, a goalkeeper that I could be looking at permanently is Colin Adgeng, NDI. I think this one would be a real smart signing, 20 years old. So he's got a perfect uh, future ahead of him, really, um, age-wise. And I think he shows potential in the National League for safe, um, for safe end of a really good goalkeeper. Good shot stopper. And on average, he has the best um, goal, goals conceded rate in the league. One on average one goal conceded each game. I think that's a credit to his ability. I think he's got a real good, like I said, future ahead of him. And I think a move up to the EFL could be a possibility. But the only stumbling block in this one, he has recently signed a new deal till 2026, so would require a massive fee for Wimbledon. My side, Walsall, I was gonna go over right wing back. I think that is the position of priority, but go and watch my video of 10 free agents Walsall should sign. I did mention a right wing back in there but another name we're going to throw forward is in the, in the striking department Kibongo Shishmanga is available on a transfer from Peterborough and I think it would be the perfect mile for war so I think if we're not going to utilise Danny Johnson as a goal scorer we've got to bring this man in as a goal scorer he scores the goals wherever he has been Boreham Wood Chesterfield hasn't quite worked out for him in the EFL so far but I think you know, if we can get the service into him, I think that is the key. If we can get the service into him, he has um, showed he, he can score goals. You know, 24 goals in 42 games in the 18 19 season, 19 20 and 20 21 season, scored 19 goals respectively. And I think he scored 24 goals in 27 for Chesterfield before he moves to Peterborough. So he shows he knows where the back of the net is, and hopefully, if it was one Warsaw could sign could show it in the EFL. Gillingham, I think this one, like the Harrogate signing, is a no-brainer really. Conor Mahoney, available on a free transfer after being released from Huddersfield, is one Gillingham should be going all out to sign. Right winger, um, and had a decent campaign for him last season in a side that struggled to you know, score in front of goal really. 11 goal contributions, and I think under Mark Bonner with the right signings, he could just excel and be one of the better quality players in this league like I said um, a really exciting player to watch he likes to get one at one one on one with his defenders and comfortable on both feet so one I think Gillingham should be looking at Crew Alexandra I think um, a right back is required really to compete with Lewis Billington at right back and I think the guy that should go out and sign is Tyler Golden 
from Halifax. He's in discussions with a new contract there, but um, if a team from the EFL coming for him, I think he would consider moving on, and I think Crew would be a good club for him. You know, they've got the right philosophy and the right principles at the club for him to kick on in his career. He has been in, in the EFL before, didn't quite work out, so dropped out, dropped down into the National League. And I think he's really excelled at Halifax and one crew should be looking at, especially on the free transfer. Recently promoted Chesterfield and I think um, even though they've won the league on 100 plus points, I think they have to um, strengthen in the defensive department and I think the player should go out and sign. He was playing in League One last season, so would be an ambitious signing but I think Chesterfield have the financial um, you know the financial pull to make this one happen Michael Hector the 31 year old played 30 plus games in League 1 last season for Charlton and I think at League 2 less, uh, League two level he would really organise that defence that's needed really and provide that EFL experience that is needed in the back line you know recently promoted they need every EFL experience that is needed and I think this one could be possible you know with them signing Paddy Madden who, who had just won the league um, in League 2 with Stockport I think uh, Michael Hector might be excited with the project happening at Chesterfield. On to Port Vale and I think with the manager like Darren Moore they'll be able to attract some big names going into next season and I think with a Darren Moore side he likes to play with a target man you know over the seasons and, he's, and in his career as a manager you know he's had Michael Smith, Jay Rodriguez so I think the first name that come to my mind as the target man is Matt Smith. I think they should go out and sign him, even if it's on a one-year deal. If it's um, if they could get him in and help him help the club get to the playoffs or promotion, what they'll probably want, it's worth it, isn't it? I think if he scored 24 goals in a struggling Salford side last season, I think he could score at least 20 to 25 goals with Port Vale with the service that they've got there. With Ethan Chislett, uh, I think he's a good player off the wing. And Ben Garrity through midfield, I think he could provide some good service if Matt Smith was to sign to you know score twenty plus goals. Swindon Town, I think like like a couple of these clubs in there, you know like your Morecambe and your Cheltenham's, I think these go into the same bracket. It's a really hard one to identify where they need really because they need a massive rebuild as it stands. Swindon haven't announced a new manager as the time I'm recording this video, which if I was a Swindon fan, I'd be absolutely disgusted with the lack of communication really but on to the transfer I think the transfer that should go out and sign is Kobe Moore on loan from Aston Villa Swindon have shown over the seasons they can develop some loan players into real good players you know they had Kane, Kessler, Hayden there on loan, Louis Barry from Villa so Aston Villa will be able to trust Swindon in that sense of developing young players and I think Kobe Moore is a really exciting young player doing well with England's under 17s and he needs a, a move to a you know a first team football in men's football now to go and show his qualities. Grimsby Town with Abu Eason leaving the club, I think this um, spares up a space at left wing. I think the player it makes sense for all parties. Charlie Kerr should be one the Mariners are looking at. I think it'll be some really good competition between him and Charles Vernon for that space. Some two quality players on the day. If Dave Dave Artel can get the best out of him. And I think he can. I think it's shown in his career. His most prolific seasons have been at Crew under a David Artel system. And I think for for his own sake and his career to start kicking on again, I think Charlie Kirk should make the move to the Mariners. A real quality player on his day. And if he's in if he's on it and in the mood to do so, I think he's one of the best players in the league. Carlisle, I, I expect a busy transfer window from them. Obviously they've already made a signing, but I think they're signing they should go out and sign. Is Marcel Oakley on a free transfer from Birmingham City. 21 years old and I think he's hungry to prove himself. And I think dropping down the leagues would be required to get regular you know, first team football. Carlisle probably will be pushing in the top half next season. So would suit his abilities. You know, I think he's a, um, a player with um, some good potential. He just needs regular game time and I think he would get it at Carlisle under Paul Simpson. Colchester, I think a striker, more specifically a goal scorer is required for this one. John Akinde has left the club so it spares up, frees up some space in the cent in the striking department. I think the player they could be looking at is Macaulay Bond. Obviously he has worked with the Cowley brothers at Lincoln so the connectionship is there already. Hasn't quite worked for him at Gillingham, obviously he was out on loan at Cambridge. 
and I think it's a bit of a disaster for him that Neil Harris left because um, them two seem to have worked in the career so far so I think a move to Colchester would be a good one would be a guaranteed starter really in that system I think it would be a good goal scorer for Colchester to go and sign Tramir Rovers I've put forward a name I think he's a really good player and he needs regular game time he got three goals and five assists at Peterborough in limited game time David Ajiboy could be the perfect replacement for Rob Atta, I believe, next season. Rob Atta was super for Tranmere and he's really influential in the way um, Tranmere played and his output ultimately with his goals and assists. I think David Ajiboy could replace this really. I think he's a hungry, promising player that possesses some really good attributes. I, I think he's really quick, really strong and you know he could get the best out of the two strong because they've got there with Connor Jennings and Luke Norris putting some good balls into the box so I think this one will require a fee Peterborough have made him available for a transfer as well so I think this one could happen Doncaster they've already started their business quite strong Joe Sabara and Jordan Gibson have arrived to the club two decent signings I think another signing they could add with the you know lonely Matthew Craig going back to Tottenham I think a real good signing would be Jendo Fuchs he has worked with Grant McCann before at Peterborough and he's another player that Peter Bereva made available for a transfer. And I think it could be one, you know, could possess some real good quality at League 2. I think he's an all-round really good midfielder, comfortable on the ball. And he'll do um, defensive work if it's required, really. So, yeah, I think it's one um, um, Doncaster need to improve in, in centre midfield and replace Matthew Craig. MK Dons, and I think it's quite obvious where they need to improve going into next season. I think going forward, and I think as a footballing side, they are probably one of the best sides in the league, if not the best. I think Mog Williamson has gotten playing some really good football, and I think that will attract some big names to come to the club. It's quite obvious where they need to improve, though. Defensively, they are so vulnerable and so weak at times, so they need that you know presence at the back, experience head that, that's going to you know stabilise the back line and organise it. So the name I put forward is Che Dunkley from Shrewsbury Town. In discussions with a new contract at the club, but MK Dons could pull it off this deal. You know, they have got some good finances behind them, so they can put a good wage towards him. I think it would be and um, would convince him to sign. He's 32 years old, but he's showing no signs of slowing up really. Um, you know, he played 45 of the 46 games last season, and he's a real aerial presence at the back, won 72% of his aerial duels, it's what MK Dons need and should go all, all out to sign. Not to count to that, they are a very similar side to MK Dons in, in the way that they want to play, the philosophies they want to play, expansive possession based football. I think John Bostock leaving frees up a space in midfield to go and recruit, I think the perfect you know, profile of player to go and sign for Not to count to is George McEachran. Recently got um, released from Swindon Town, I think would be the perfect um, profile, like I said, the perfect mould um, of going forward for Notts County. Really comfortable on the ball, um, his ranges of passes are superb, and like I said, he likes to get on the ball, dictate play, and I think it would be a perfect um, signing for Notts County. He needs the right partnership alongside him in midfield, more of a physical and defensive midfielder, but um, yeah, with the right, you know, you know the, the right partnership in midfield it would be a great signing for Notts. Finally Bradford City and I think Bradford are going to make some big signings going to next season they've already had with Anthony Sarsevich with David Sharp now director of football he'll have the connection ship to go and sign some big names but I think what's required is a left back or a left wing back to suit Graham Alexander's style I think the player will have to go, go all out and sign is Rio Adebisi from Crew Alexandra. I thought he had an outstanding season last season. From left back, 11 goal contributions is excellent. And I think his all round player as a left back is really good. I think he's really good in attacking and defensive one on ones. And it would suit Bradford because they, they really do need a left back um, to take him to the next level. And available on a free transfer. Crew have offered him a new deal, but I think Bradford, you know, they can, you know, get the players, pull the players to the club 
Um, you know, we saw that with Anthony Sarsavich. This one could be a possibility if Bradford go out and sign him. So there you have it. I've identified a transfer each League Two side needs to make in this summer transfer window. Let me know in the comments if you agree or not. Leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. And um, like I said, leave in the comments if you if you agree with my selections and add any other names in the comments. I'd like to hear um, your opinion, sir. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.